Hey everybody, this is James from TDB bringing you a, uh, another up deep dive into a tea-related topic. So today we're not going to be tasting anything on this episode, um, but we're going to be f- focusing on something topically related to tea, uh, specifically heat and heat retention. Um, so uh, trying a slightly different format, even from the storage episodes. Uh, so any feedback, really appreciated. So tea at its most basic is leaves and water. And I think we take basic things like heat, pour time, um, for granted uh, when these can be really important aspects and have a really, really large impact on um, what the tea tastes like. So in this episode, I am doing some experiments to measure the heat and heat retention in various uh, devices. We won't be tasting any tea or doing any side-by-sides. And at first, I was originally going to center this around sort of the material and the brewing device, sort of like, is this a Yixing, is it a larger pot, is it a Gaiwan um, made out of porcelain, uh, etc. Um, but I ended up doing a couple extra things, so I think it's a little more broad. Um, so we'll be looking at those things, but we're also going to be looking at things like preheating, um, high pour, so if you pour from high versus low, um, and how hot the water is uh, sort of when you fill up only half the device. And a couple more things, um, some of it re- related to kettles and well. So all of this is really focused on heat. Um, and for this, I re- used a normal food thermometer. Uh, for your reference, I am at Seattle at around sea level. Um, this is relevant um, because water will boil at different temperatures for people in higher altitudes. So uh, if you live way in the mountains, it will boil at a lower temperature than at sea level. So I'm approximately at sea level here. Um, and I boiled the water uh, each time uh, before each experiment uh, and then poured it into what I was using. And then what I would do is I would measure the temperature immediately or I'd measure the temperature after a minute or I would or I would measure the temperature again after five minutes. So uh, sort of testing heat retention over time, five minutes probably being the best sort of metric to measure that, as well as just uh, if the device sucks out heat faster than a different device. These things, I I made sure that the device was not preheated. Um, And at room temperature, uh, it's not what I would call like a precise, super precise lab experiment. Uh, but I think, uh, while it's not a comprehensive study and there's a good chance that a lot of these are off by one or two degrees, um, I think that you can definitely, uh, have some clear takeaways, even just using really rudimentary equipment and methodology. So I repeated each of these a few times just so I could be sure and confident of the results. All right, so the first experiment involved pouring water into a 120 milliliter gaiwan that was just previously at room temperature. I measured the temperature immediately after pouring and then a minute after. In this pour, uh, you could see that it was measured around 200 degrees Fahrenheit after pouring into the 120 milliliter gaiwan. Boiling is at 212, so you can see that immediately you're getting some heat loss by just pouring into that device. Um, and then the second experiment one was is essentially the same, but with a 75 milliliter guy one. So I was curious to see if the size would have a big impact on the loss. And when you measure them immediately, the, the results are very, very close together. Um, and then after a minute, both of the results are still pretty close. And over the course of a minute, they both measured around 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but what happens when you extend this to five minutes? Um, it cools down by another 10 degrees or so if we're using our um, 120 milliliter guy one, so measuring around 180. But the smaller guy one uh, notably cools down very quickly and it measures almost another 10 degrees cooler at 170. So for the early steeps, uh, this may not matter much, but as you brew a tea, uh, if you're doing sort of gong fu style, as we do on TDB, uh, you will uh, start to extend the steep time. And once you're doing um, a couple minutes, uh, this will probably have a pretty big impact. So I think for me, uh, this says that, you know, I might be using a smaller device to start, but it might be a good idea to sort of transfer the leaves to a larger vessel once you are starting to use more extended steep times, especially if you're trying to get absolutely everything out of the tea. Uh, 
I think it's also pretty likely uh, that while the one minute measurements were pretty close together, I think given uh, what I consistently found on the five minute measurements uh, is that most likely the smaller guy one was at a little lower temperature. It just was, um, the difference of them was just small enough that uh, my uh, basic equipment, my food thermometer, probably not the best for picking up on it uh, with enough certainty. Okay, so uh, what about preheating? Uh, preheating is basically a practice of essentially heating up devices before brewing. Uh, you can see basically in just about every episode of TDB, I do it uh, fairly religiously. Uh, and you heat up everything before brewing. You usually will even heat up the cups. That's not something we're focusing on for, for this difference. Uh, and you know, we can see that pre preheating um, results in hotter um, initial water. So this is when we pour, uh, when we measure the, um, the brewing device immediately after we pour in sort of our first steep. So it's about 10 degrees Fahrenheit in just about all cases. That's a lot. Um, that's a pretty big difference. And this is something we found across the board in just about every vessel in Ixing, in both of the Gaiwans. Uh, in a larger pot, um, etc. I think you may look at these results and think, okay, I preheat all my devices, no big deal. Uh, but there's also sort of a larger implication to preheating if we think about it a little more. Um, so if we think about where preheating might have an impact, um, it's whenever we're pouring into a device uh, close together. So let's say I did steep five here. If I waited 10 minutes to do steep six, it would probably have cooled down close to sort of a resting temperature. But if I did steep five and then I waited 20 seconds and then did steep six, that would probably be closer to preheating, which would mean that I'm brewing this uh, up to 10 degrees hotter. That's interesting. Um, and not to mention that, uh, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, that if you are not reboiling your water to your water could be a little bit cooler if you're brewing it 10 minutes later and you have not reboiled. Um, it's also a reason I usually prefer to leave the lid on my devices while I'm brewing. Um, it prevents the dice from cooling down a little bit more quickly. Um, so usually for me, I'm trying to get more heat onto the tea and brew it harder uh, in terms of especially heat. Um, so that's the reason I will keep it open, uh, uh, keep it closed rather, because the device will cool down more quickly um, if the uh, if the lid is off. Okay, so now we move on to using an Ishing. So I I used this pot right here. Um, it's a pot I normally use for semi-aged shang, supposedly a '90s pot made out of Qing Shuiyi. I also repeated this with a couple other pots to see if there would be a difference. I did not find a significant difference. There might be small differences, uh, but we're focusing on larger, uh, easier to substantiate claims here. So, um, and what I noticed is that the heat retention is very similar to our 120 milliliter Gaiwan. Um, this it was uh, a little surprising for me. Um, I've seen it surmised that heat retention is a pretty big part of uh, pot's effectiveness. It was just surprising to me that I couldn't detect a huge difference at one minute or at five minutes. Um, so while well, I think it's quite possible that it does retain heat better than a guy one of the equivalent size, um, it seems like the differences are not humongous. So that's interesting. Um, I'm not, that doesn't make me a pot naysayer necessarily. It just says that there might be other aspects that will make the tea taste different uh, if you are brewing it in a pot rather than simply heat retention. Um, okay, so we also used a much larger pot. So using this one, this is the teapot. Uh, those of you that watch my ripe in between episodes that I'll use to brew tea for my wife in the morning. So a pot I use pretty regularly, um, usually for more casual brews. Um, and uh, I've noticed that usually when you scale up the pot, things tend to brew up a bit differently. Uh, you could say maybe it's because it has more room to expand. Um, but uh, a, for example, a one to 15 grams of leaf to milliliter ratio in tea for something like this will taste pretty different if you do it for a larger vessel. 
Um, and uh, basically I found that the resif the differences in heat were actually pretty similar. I thought that this, there was a good chance that this might retain heat better than a smaller device. But uh, similar to the Yixing stuff, I found that it was actually closer, something that was a little surprising. Um, I think this is probably worth doing higher precision experiments on um, and testing a little more thoroughly. Um, but, uh, but that's what I found. Now we're going to look at a practice that is the opposite of preheating. Uh, it's a practice I've seen a few times. It's essentially pouring water into the kettle uh, before pouring it into the brew brewing vessel. Um, so we can see here that uh, there's actually a huge amount of loss on heat loss on the initial pour into glass. Um, so you can see that it's the temperature is just substantially lower uh, if you pour it into the glass first before pouring it into um, your vessel. Um, so that's really, really important. Uh, a good follow-up experiment to this could be pouring the hot water into a zojirushi or something that holds tea better than glass. Um, so my advice is usually to avoid this if you can. Uh, I don't think it's a good substitute for just pouring straight into uh, this. Maybe that's a good way to brew green tea. Uh, usually for me, I'm, I'm not looking to brew it that way. So, and if you absolutely can't avoid that, like you need to, the kettle is in the kitchen and you need to pour it into something, you should compensate by adding um, a lot of brew time. Another thing I was curious about is the high pour. Um, so pouring from up here rather than down here. Uh, I noticed that Scott of Yunnan Sourcing did this when we visited him. Uh, we were visiting on particularly hot days and he said it worked. So I found that uh, in the rudimentary test I did, it made a few degrees difference, three or four degrees Fahrenheit. Probably worth testing more. Um, it's not the hugest difference maker, but it did have a measurable difference when I did the test. Okay, and the final test with just the brewing vessels I did was with the 120 milliliter and 75 milliliter guy ones. I wanted to see what would happen if you pour into them and they're half full. And I've seen it asserted by people um, that like to use larger pots that, you know, no big deal if you have a 200 milliliter pot, but you're brewing a small amount of tea, just fill it halfway. Um, and so I was pretty surprised by these results too, uh, but I found that that uh, if you measured it, uh, the, uh, the heat was just much lower all around, much lower immediately and much lower after one minute, much lower after uh, five minutes. Um, and uh, it's probably because when you pour it in, uh, the heat ends up having to heat up the whole vessel. We're not gonna get too into the science of it. Someone could probably give a much better explanation to me. Um, but I think it is an important takeaway for anyone that is brewing in that way, that if you are filling up halfway or just partially, you are probably brewing your tea at a much lower temperature than you would be if you were filling up the device all the way. So uh, also has a small implication for preheating. Don't half ass your preheat by pouring up into just half of the device. Heat it up all the way. Finally, I did some experiments with the Tetsubin and kettle. A tea friend had messaged me and told me that he found that his Tetsubin, uh, which is the same as mine, he got it at the same place, same model, uh, cooled down all the way to 190F after a minute. So this was pretty concerning to me because 190 degrees is quite a bit off of a boil. Um, so I went around, uh, I wanted to experiment a little bit of this. Um, another criticism t of TDB that I've seen, I think it's a legitimate crit criticism for sure, is that sometimes we don't use hot enough water, uh, which basically means we should be reboiling more often because we never really use water that is like set to 190 or 180 or whatever. So here I essentially boiled a full electric kettle, uh, the one that you see in the show, um, so completely filled up to what is supposedly the max capacity and a full tetsu bin, which was this guy, um, which I then transferred to a cast iron trivet that had not previously had anything on it. So the cast iron trivet was at room temperature when I did this experiment. Um, and then uh, basically I poured out the water uh, immediately after a boil and measured it. And then I poured out the water a minute after a boil to, to measure it and then five minutes uh, after. So I did this several times um, for each measurement. 
And what I found was that actually the electric kettle and Tetsuben kept the heat at very similar levels. Um, after a minute, they, uh, so no, I think this is also important if you're thinking about how you're brewing and how often you're reboiling your tea. So after a minute, they measured about five uh, degrees less. And after uh, another minute, uh, after uh, five minutes rather, they measured another five degrees less than that. So what I found, and I ended up talking to my friend a little bit about this, was I was unable to sort of corroborate his um, results. And he ended up doing some experience, experiments himself and finding that his results were a little closer to mine. But it is interesting that if you take your tetsu bin off, or if you just stop your electric kettle, that you're going to lose those five degrees pretty fast within a minute. And after um, another uh, five minutes, you're going to lose another five degrees. So it tells me a little bit more about like how often you want to reboil. Um, and yeah, uh, so pouring off the boil is something I've definitely been doing more recently, especially for aged teas, trying to just get the maximum amount of tea of heat I can. I think it's worth noting that I do drink a lot of HTs and a little bit lighter on the oolongs. I don't drink a ton and I especially don't drink a ton of greener oolongs. So teas that you might want to be a little bit more careful for because they might be a little more delicate. Um, but yeah, um, so um, a few takeaways, uh, material and size. Uh, you could look at this and think that material had a pretty minimal impact on heat and heat retention. Um, and I was just kind of a little bit personally surprised by that result, but I also don't think that you should overly read into that. I think that it's pretty well substantiated and supported that brewing vessels have a large impact on how it goes. So just because we found in a few experiments that the heat is relatively close on a lot of these devices um, doesn't mean that, uh, that you should uh, just use whatever you want. Um, I think, uh, I, I, and for me personally, I'd also be curious to try this out on more extreme materials. So things that have a reputation for really uh, retaining heat really well, something like silver um, versus something that has a reputation for uh, not being very well insulated like titanium. Uh, so it'd cool down really quick. I don't own uh, anything for either of those devices. So I may need to borrow one from someone um, to see uh, and try basically repeat these same experiments and see what happens. Um, another big takeaway I think for me is that preheating, really important, high impact. You should also think about how uh, long ago your previous teeth was um, when you're trying to figure out how long to brew the tea. Um, and uh, yeah, another takeaway is that high pour has a relatively mild impact um, and, an and it's bad idea to usually half fill um, a vessel or at least a, a factor you need to definitely take into account or to pour into something like this uh, and then into a brewing device. Feel free to do these at home. Uh, I did not use anything super special or expensive to do this experiment so I'd be curious to see what you find and if you do uh, please comment below. Uh, thank you all again and I will see you all next time. Cheers.